Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Mask of the Rose. In the last episode we managed to find the Rubbery Men, so I think we're going to be chasing that little thread today, but let's start off by recalling the past. What are the options here? Archie and Harjit had a conversation about something. Horatia offered Harjit a place to bring the wounded, but I can't really remember. Let's go with this one, Archie and Harjit, since there's a little bit of friction right now with Archie being arrested. I think I remember Archie talking to Harjit. I'm not sure whether it was right when Harjit arrived though. It might have been later. Something about laudanum doses. What to do if Harjit found someone who was on the verge of dying in a lot of pain? That memory is hazy, as if I heard it from another room, or was half asleep at the time. I couldn't swear to it. There was something else, too, that I haven't thought of until now. Just the flicker of an exchange. How old would your wife be then? Only the size and gender changes the dose. Ah. You don't recall? No, I haven't forgotten anything. Ah, I'm a doctor. Or near to it. There's no need to be shy. And the Nyron is sleeping by the look of it. Well, uh, the person in question is a gentleman. In his thirties? A military man near my own height. Oh, I? Not your wife, then. If it's a comfort to you, I've made a friendship or two of that persuasion myself. Though nay of recent months. They went away, then. Archie showing Hajit how to measure various medicines for a large military gentleman. Interesting. Well, let's head outside. What sort of options do we have? We can go to the Undulate. What can we do there? Build my friendship with Archie, see whether he needs anything. We can tell Archie about Archie's arrest, which seems strange. And we can find out how to go on publishing revelations about the Ministry. But I would like to return to the Warrens of Amber. Oh, we can take the census with the rubbery creatures. Let's go take the census. What, what could possibly go wrong? Let's make ourselves wear our badge, at least. This is an official visit. Uh, let's wear our elegant cloak as well. Uh, the badge will eliminate any expectation of a social visit at any rate. I'm satisfied with this. Let's go. Ah, you decided to come back. We took a bet. I said he'd frightened you away. Atta Chikan disagreed. Atta Chikan makes a series of smug honks. I explain my task as well as I can. Let's respond with protective kindness. There's nothing for you to worry about. You and Bar Queen are alone down here. He makes a series of lonely hoots. We are together here, alone. The first of his kind in London, and I the last of mine. We make do, as you are fond of saying here. Let's keep going with the protective kindness. You rubbery men take spouses. He makes a series of diffident honks. Some seem to indicate Barwin. 
He lacks the requisite vocabulary. I believe the rubbery men consider themselves a choir or a chorus. The word commingling is used. I hope you do not wish for me to contemplate this subject further. So we can either lament the current lack of commingling in my life to Barwin. I can lament the current lack of commingling to my life to Butter Chicken. I can laugh, or I can risk asking, since she seems well disposed, despite the warning. Let's just go with the... Let's lack... <laughs> let's lament the current lack of commingling in my life to Barwin. Even mingling would be welcomed at this point. Perhaps the error is you talk about what you want, as though hoping the listener will furnish you with it, rather than working to achieve it. A lesson, perhaps. They are kin. The distinction between one and the next dissolves. Memory is shared. Friend, sibling, spouse, ancestor. Those terms don't mean to them what they mean to us. Hmm. We can express envy for that sense of connection. That sounds like an enviable state of being. A greater connection with one's own kind. They are able to disagree with one another sometimes. Even made as they are. What's the state of your own heart? Do you have a spouse or lover? Write down that there are no alliances worth recording. It will be true enough. Butter Chicken hoots appreciatively and produces a piece of slate. Another tentacle holds a piece of chalk. Bahuin reluctantly takes the chalk and slate while Butter Chicken gestures. The slate reads Greeblings. A pause. A scribbling. Many greeblings. There is further scribbling. Conveyance of merry greeblings today. Requested friend, partner, enemy, Barquin, essence gather. Commence barter, merchant dreams, trade coin want. <laughs> I can uh, I can relate to this last bit. <laughs> Insisted. He means the market. Requested. Perpetrate commingling. There is further frantic scribbling. Admixture essences require proceed commercially become. The chalk snaps. He looks like he's going absolutely insane. Oh, for the sake of heaven, I told you this would happen. And it took me days to scrimp up enough to let that wretched woman consider letting me have it. But a chicken makes plaintive, plangent, honking noises with increased intensity. No, I cannot go and fetch another if you would have allowed me to translate for myself. We have functioned admirably these last centuries. Why you wish to change the arrangement is beyond me. I suggest the batter chicken was not very coherent anyway. <laughs> uh, let's offer to buy more chalk, I guess, actually. Mm. Uh, let's go with he wasn't very coherent. He'll be fine. It was not the most enlightening of communication. Better chicken makes a string of Mournful hoots. I understand it is distressing to hear, but we must face the truth as it is, however much we dislike it. To overcome one's circumstances, one must first accept them. We sense the city out there is not yet ready for our emergence. 
That a chicken is keen. Too keen. His tentacles are like roots making for the surface. I have advocated caution. But you are the first personage to encounter us. What do you think? Am I... incorrect? We can reassure her that caution is preferable. We can suggest other of an uncanny nature are already in London. Or we can suggest they'll need to manage like everyone else. I mean, let's say that there are many other uncanny things in London. Talking cats, for example. Devils walk the streets of London. Dockers speak of men of clay, too. Ah, I am familiar with both. The devils, well, let us say their neutrality in political matters is not to be believed. The clay men are admirable labourers. I discussed philosophy with one as the scriptoria were rebuilt. He called himself unfinished. He seemed finished to me. Perhaps it is a state of perpetual enlightenment. But both groups, you will concur, are more human than our friend, Mata Chican. The problem is that he has a... a request. He has a purpose to go ahead to prepare the path for the others. They wait below. I owe them a debt for my own safeguarding when I left the fourth to its ruin. Let's ask what the others are. And who are these others? Friends of yours? They are like and unlike him. Our Bata Chican is singular. But he represents many waiting in the amber warrens below. They have not always been treated kindly. I myself was unkind. When they emerge, they hope Bata Chican's work will have gone forward. Bata Chican makes a series of frantic burbles. Oh, for goodness sake. He has something for you. A piece of amber from the vats. I would undertake this task myself, but Bata Chican fears I will upset someone. A baseless accusation, but since my impeccable service is in question, we would like to ask you. But a chicken makes a strangled keening noise. A stall holder. Oh, he wants you to give the amber to someone who owns a place of commerce. What is the amber? Ah, you assume I'm familiar with that. Better Chican makes a series of sibilant, high-pitched squeaks. It is... We would say spirit, but it is not that. It is resinous, that is attuned to the essence of those it comes into contact with. Like leaving a fingerprint in warm clay. It is how I was found when the city fell. They... He... Remembered me. Well, I'll accept the amber. I take the amber in my hand, oddly warm to the touch and clammy. It is important that the amber be delivered to one of the mercantile orientation. I hope you do not mean that dreadful costmonger at the market. I refuse to translate your speech for her. I do not know nearly enough insults in this tongue. At a chicken makes a series of indignant honks. Oh, very well. Someone vaguely successful. Don't ask me why. I don't understand it myself. They need to hold the amber. Then bring it back here. 
Give Butter Chicken's Amber to a shopkeeper, then bring it back. I wonder if this Amber is going to kind of steal their essence. Make the rubbly men a better merchant. Butter Chicken makes a series of frantic, warbling noises. Ah, yes. He wishes you to have one for yourself as well. Ooh, an amber brooch. A token of a rubbery kind and an expression of commitment to the neath. Surface? What surface? A very nice brooch. Now, if you'll find your own way out. I picked up an amusing novel at the market. It's about a very enterprising young lady named Audley. She is full of moral fibre. I am keen to return to it. And leaves time for another errand. Well, I think we should go to the market. Uh, which is... Yeah, Hogs Lane Market. Take Butter Chicken's Amber to Ivy. He's the only merchant I know. The badge will eliminate any expectations of a social visit. Let's change. Let's put on... The Amber Brooch. Look at how lovely that is. Wait. I can put on the Taylor's outfit maybe and get some unique dialogue with her. Hang on. Let's, uh... Let's put on the, the apron. Hope she doesn't take it as a as a bad sign that I'm trying to steal her job. The brooch makes it look as though I'm doing some sort of official business, though who can say for what office? Yeah, I'm satisfied. Let's go. Good, Halamus, my lord. I trust the Neath isn't treating you too badly. The amber brooch suggests I'm here on someone's business. Even if it doesn't say whose. Would you like to hold this amber? Could you take this for a moment? Oh, in the name of sanity. What is it? Is that perspiration or oil? Um. Can I be truthful? Or should I just dare her to touch it? Let's be truthful. It comes from a man made of rubber who lives under London. Whatever. I thought we were... G wherever I thought we were going, this is not where I thought we'd end. Under London, you say? Like a man, but not tentacles and amber? Give it here. I suppose it's no worse than a hat box full of sick. Which I have been asked to handle before. I can hardly recommend self-employment. It feels warm. I assume not from your mitts. Curious piece. It feels like it's friendly somehow. Like I'm meant to be touching it. I wonder how it works. Here, take it back. I tell her what I know about the rubbery caves and stone. It comes from tunnels below London. Ivy listens intently. Lots of them down there, you say. Maybe I'll pay a visit. Get more practical shoes than these first, mind. Wouldn't recommend they come up here en masse. You know what people are like. And they've more of this amber, you say. How interesting. Now, did you have anything else on your mind? No one speaks for a moment. I can flirtatiously tease Ivy. I can look into her goods for sale. That's what she's selling. Oh, look. Something respectable and ladylike. Something respectable and gentlemanly. Oh. Something at home in the university? A ladylike straw hat suitable for making new friends. A gentleman's top hat suitable for making new friends. I could pick up something gentlemanly. Let's do that. 
A collection contains many things of this sort that could be fitted to you. I can either overpay, I can offer a fair price, or I can offer a low price. Let's offer a, let's overpay and see if it boosts our friendship with her or something. I'll give you three pennies for that men's coat. Well, now, I'd have taken two, but they say generosity always does come back to you. Not sure it's true, my lord. But I owe you one now. A respectable, if not elaborate, garment which does not commit me to any particular social grouping. You're not bad company to have around, I must say. I'll be glad to talk to you again, if you were to come back. Often there's customers, but sometimes there aren't. We can either encourage Ivy in a more romantic direction. We can accept and plan to befriend Ivy. We can make it insultingly clear I'm not interested in friendship. Let's, um... Let's accept and plan to befriend her. I'd like that. That suits. If you have any company that's a bit more in the common way, there's a rat catcher's shop a few blocks away. Put out your hand and I'll show you. Spread right up my palm and Ivy touches three points on it, like a fortune teller mapping my fate. You start here, you walk here, and sniff for the smell of ripe fruit. Then you follow this line. It's an explanation no worse than any other I've had down here. Now we've learned about Ferret's shop. Ferret is the local menace eradicator, and there's significant need for their services lately. It's time to go home. Go straight to the table. Or should we change clothes? Let's put on our new jacket. Our new gentleman's jacket. Oh, look at that. Lovely. Horatia pauses. Something has been on her mind, I think. It's your family. What is your home? When you say we, who is included? Uh. Name our own little group of boarders, because that's pretty much what it actually is. Chapman's is home to me. Not to imagine another. And I hope it will remain so. I'm not going anywhere. Some of the lodgers may come and go, if I can't prevent it. But they'll seldom leave against their will. It's good to know you are... It's good to know your own. In God's sight, there is no east or west. We can't help nor rely on those who are too far from us. Convert to Horatia's view. <laughs> what? I, I guess. Well, I don't quite understand what her view is. Her view is that we can only rely on the people closest to us and we have to ignore everyone else. That seems patently false. Um... I mean, it's kind of true, I guess, but, you know, just because people are far away from you doesn't mean you can't count on them. Uh, let's... sidestep the question by deciding what relationship I want with Horatia. You're holding back some thought. Because she's like a member of my own family, I guess. I grin. Ah. Let's tell Horatia what I found in the Amber Warrens. I went to the caves below the sinkhole, looking for the men with tentacles. Thank you, I'd have gone myself, if I could. Full of undulating wrigglies ready to undermine London's cellars. Horrible tentacles oozing forth to pull us from our beds. Well, it wasn't anything connected to our basement. Oh. Another truth. 
I met a robbery man. I explain about Barquin and Vata Chitkan. I suppose it stands to reason we're not the first down here. Can't be just devils and masters and what have you, but ordinary sorts too. Well, as ordinary as a man that looks like something found dredged up on a hauler ship can be. Seems a sorry fate to lose your home twice over. I hope something can be done for them. I head up towards my room to sleep when the sound of voices draws me back to the parlour. How many centuries? You're looking well for it, I must say. I slept through a significant amount of it. And I'm told resin is an excellent preservative. Well, not every day I meet somebody from Mongolia, let alone also being over a hundred years old. Not that I meet many people these days. But I am glad you're not involved in the business in the basement. Cellars are best for wine and air rag, and not connected by doors. I shall bear this in mind. Ah, I'll leave you two to it. So this is where you live. The decor is... noisy. I feel an ache of the head coming on. But preferable to noisome caverns dripping with amber. I'm gonna suggest that she can't keep away from me. Am I so irresistible? Of course you are resistible. <laughs> I should not expect you to stand up to a strong prevailing wind. So it is fortunate that there are none here. Now, if you have ceased being foolish, I wish to speak to you. It is Bata Chikan's request regarding the amber. It is important that the amber is returned so we may gather the essences. Bata Chikan has fixated upon the commercial enterprises in the city. I do not mind indulging his whims, but... The goal is to effect a peaceable, rubbery introduction to Londinium. Nothing more. Hmm, let's ask if she is afraid what will happen if Batter Chicken gets his wish. He must be worried he won't need you anymore. What do I have to fear? You? Is that your game? To drive a wedge? Your facility with his language is, of course, beginner's luck. Or perhaps better ascribed to his long acquaintance with me. He has learnt to better communicate with our kind through my tutelage. So be assured, though you may understand him well enough, I am his interpreter. Hmm. Suggests that her plan means everyone will soon be able to understand him. Saying that I can act in his interest as well as her. Or I can give way to her. Let's just give way here. This is getting aggressive. I did not mean to challenge you. Challenge me? I who survived the lacquer, the eyes, the roses and the ruin. I who in a matter of months has mastered your mongrel tongue. Enough to interpret the tentacled writhings of the rubbery men through it. But I see I have made my point. I apologize if I am abrupt with you. But I barely know you. And our acquaintance has not made me desire to know you better. Thus far. Perhaps if you can show us you can be trusted with this matter of the amber. Then we may have more faith in each other. And I shall feel less of a need to protect my... Well, I shall intrude no further. Good day. Wow. Let's review the day in my journal. So take the amber back to Barquin. And we I should go and beat the Landau. The remaining Landau. Rachel Landau. How many days are left in the season of confessions? Hopefully it's two.
bugger. <laughs> One day remains in the season of confessions. Okay, so maybe if I can go and meet Rachel. And then we'll worry about the rubbery men. We can do two things. Maybe we'll go see Rachel and then go see the rubbery men. Another morning. Another newspaper. This morning lies open on the table. Population of rats and spiders in London said to have tripled overnight. Again? Is that a tripling of the tripling? We might be in trouble. <laughs> I'm not too occupied. Otherwise, I can speak to my friends. Yes, I can. Assuming we can walk through all the spiders. But this seems like a perfect place for me to end this episode. So thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. Thank you again to the members of the channel. It really does help keep making these videos. And as always, I'll see you next time.